This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This small session goes through and introduces another new accounting standard, but one of those that, that, that's only very, very, very small. Uh, so there's a slim chance of you seeing it within the exam, but do just be aware, just in case it were to crop up, that you have a knowledge of what is required from your interim financial statements. So what we have is we, we know how to prepare our year-end financial statements. However, when you're a listed company, you need to give information to the user of the accounts on a more regular basis than just on an annual basis, don't we? So what we do is we prepare interim financial statements. So whether that is quarterly, uh, whether that is six monthly, the key bit is when you produce those interim financial statements, whether they're quarterly or whether they are six monthly, the key bit is that they are condensed. So we don't need as much information. It mentions that, that essentially we just need the headings, we just need the subtotals, and what we need there is essentially any helpful information. So has there been anything significant that's happened between the year end and the interim reporting date? Uh, and if that's the case, then we need some explanatory disclosure notes to support what has happened. OK, the key bit and I thought most of the examinability is actually going to go through and focus upon what is specifically required with regards to the financial statements and what are going to be our comparatives. OK, so what we've got there is we first of all look at your statement of financial position. We then move on to profit and loss and other comprehensive income. Uh, we then look at is it your changes in equity and then is it your statement of cash flows, your, your four primary financial statements. We know that we're going to go through and prepare those financial statements up to the interim date. But what's going to be the comparative? OK, so if you look at your financial position, clearly you prepare your statement of financial position in a condensed format at the interim date. And at the previous reporting date, not the, the, the last interim date, not the interim date that, that was last year. Uh, you look at the reporting date, so your year end and what your interim date actually is. So if you are doing things six monthly, then you will have your six month interim date and last year's reporting date. If you are doing it quarterly, you will have your first quarter compared to is it your reporting date and then when you get to your half yearly you will have your half yearly results compared to your reporting date results okay uh, just be careful with the statement of profit or loss because you need to put it in the both for the interim cumulatively to date for the year and the previous interim date for the year okay uh, so when you're looking at your six months for this interim period, you need to go through there and put that in for the previous interim period as well. OK, so that gives you a better light for light comparison, doesn't it? Uh, in terms of what you had previously. OK, just be careful if you were doing things quarterly. And I think I'm correct in understanding this is that as well as looking for the, the, the six month period compared to the, the comparative six month period, what you also need to go through and do is you need to put in, as it says, the interim to date. So that interim period. Uh, so just be careful if you're quarterly. That's what we were saying, wasn't it? Uh, because if you're going through there and looking at things quarterly and you get to your six months, then what you should do there is you should put in for the six months to date, but also that interim three month period to date. OK, so whatever you had from the end of the first quarter to the end of, if you like, the first half year. OK, so there's a little bit more that is required from your statement of profit or loss. It's the more difficult one to go through there and think about. Uh, you also need to think about your statement of change in equity. Uh, so that's to your interim date. Just be careful here that takes on board a direct comparative okay uh, so you have your statement of change in equity for the six month period you then look at a direct comparative for the previous year's six month period for your statement of change in equity uh, similarly 
then for your statement of cash flows, obviously cumulatively for the, the, the period to date and for the comparable period. So the, the previous year's six months. Okay, and what I'm going to go through and do just to try and help you along, get you a little bit uh, more understanding of, of how things go through and work is to take the figures. I think I've taken, if memory serves me right, the International Airlines Group. Uh, the International Airlines Group essentially is what British Airways and Iberia merged to become. Uh, and we can look at the, the figures that you've got there and how they've done it. So you've got there, I, I think they have a December year end, if memory serves me right, and they, and they prepare uh, quarterly interim financial statements. So what you've got there is on the consolidated income statement, uh, you've got there the six months uh, to the end of June. So that's for their six month period. Uh, and then what you've also got as well, uh, if you look at the consolidated income statement, Remember, you needed to do both cumulatively to the dates and then also for that interim period. So for the interim period here, given that we're in the second three months of the year, we also need to look at what those second three months of the year have shown us. OK, so you've got that of three months to June. So is that April, May and June results for this year compared to April, May and June results for last year? OK. Uh, then what we've got, if we look at the statements of financial position, which we'll see in a moment, apologies, getting ahead of myself. Uh, you then also need to go through as well uh, and disclose a little bit more with regards to your basic earnings per share and your diluted earnings per share for that interim period as well. OK, so for those six months, uh, you need your basic and your diluted EPS. Uh, we'll touch upon earnings per share in another chapter, don't we? OK. Uh, in terms of the statements of financial position, remember we looked at that at the interim date and at the previous reporting date. Okay, so our six month reporting date is the end of June and we compare that to the year end date for the last accounting year, which is there as December 2014. And I think next we've got, is it the statement of cash flows? So that looks at the comparable period. So we've got the six months, is it the to 2015? And the comparable period is the six months to 2014, isn't it? Okay. Uh, and again, you can see there that, that statement of cash flows is much more condensed. Okay. Uh, there's not as much information there as what you would normally expect. Again, I've cut it short. You've only got the operating and investing. Uh, I've not bothered putting the financing activities in there, but it's a little bit more condensed uh, than what you would normally expect. And then what you've got there, your consolidated statement of change in equity, isn't it? So you've got the, is it for the six months to June 2015? You look at the same period, isn't it, for June 2014? Okay. Uh, there you have it. Uh, it. It's only a very, very small accounting standard. I would have an awareness of it in case it were to appear in any of your questions whatsoever. But it's not going to be tested in huge amounts of detail, is it? There's, there's not enough there within the standard to warrant it being tested in any amount of detail. So other than that, just ensure that you're aware that you prepare the financial statement in a condensed version and also ensure that you are aware of what each of the financial statements comparative should be. Other than that, that's the end of your interim financial reporting. When you're out there in the real world, you'll be involved in it on a regular basis. So have an awareness of it. And other than that, I'll see you all within the next session. Goodbye for now.